All right, guys, here we go. Good morning, good morning. This is your uh, friend of Mundo, Jose Trujillo, world's greatest living artist, coming to you from my car. <laughs> the car studio, baby. You know what? That's just, yeah, it's this. Very cool. So, um, as, um, as I was mentioning on my rants, <laughs> on my rants earlier, uh, yeah, guys, be the giver, baby. Don't be playing around like that. Be the giver. There's uh, there's power in being the giver. There's a lot of power. You just you gotta you gotta you gotta find out where you can be the giver. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that the giver um, tries to give as much as possible. Right, they give as much as possible. They dispro like disproportionately give more than they're asking for. That's one of the things that I've noticed. Like the people that are winning on YouTube, you know, they give so much. Like it's not so much that they like they give so many videos like I do. They give so much entertainment, right? It's so much entertainment. Uh, the blogs or whatever. There's a there's a there's a, a, a there's a shitload of entertainment compressed into like a five minute YouTube video. Uh, look at those tasty videos. The tasty videos. They show you how to do a recipe and and, and maybe make maybe even make you believe that you can do the damn recipe. You know, how's <laughs> this thing to? Uh, I was listening to uh, uh, this uh, talk on NPR about that, about the YouTube videos, and and and, and what was it? It's called Brain Something. Those talks. I don't know. My wife was the one who showed me. She's like, "Oh, you gotta listen to this." And Brainy Something or Brain Something. I don't know. Something Brain. Uh, and I just kind of break down the mechanisms of 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 how. The behavior, right, of, of, of this type of things. So, anyways, I mean, look at those tasty videos. Look at the videos that the kids watch on YouTube, if you have any kids. Uh, just just look at it. it they, some of them just look so damn pointless and so stupid, right? But they have, like, millions of followers. And most people, we, we become, like, like we get, like, like, booty about it, right? We're like, oh, my God, like, it's so stupid, why do they get so many followers? Why do they get so many followers? Well, it's very simple. They're giving a lot of something. They're giving a lot of something. You just gotta, you just gotta find out what it is that they're giving, because they're giving a lot of something. And usually, on platforms like that, is they're giving a lot of entertainment. There's a lot of entertainment happening in a very short period of time. And so they, they go and they create this video and they spend hours and hours and hours and they, they just, you know, they, they probably spend like two weeks to make a video, if not more, the people that, are, that do it professionally. And then they give you this super entertaining video for free on YouTube. For free, right? Like super entertaining video. And then you're like there watching it. And then you ask yourself, how come it has, you know, two million views or something like that? Well, how come not? Look how entertaining that is. You know? In a world where most of us, 99% of us, are looking to entertain ourselves, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's candy for a kid. Right? And, and I've, I've gone on rants on why we, we need to entertain ourselves. It's, it's the human condition. I'm just going to touch on it real quick. <laughs> I love touching on it. It's the human condition, guys. The human, the human being thinks a lot. 
no matter whether you're smart or not, you think a lot. You think dispro- you disproportionately think more than you do. It's just the, it's just the way we are. It's just uh, it's in our it's in our conditioning, society and, and religious and ethnic and and it's just the human being as a whole. It doesn't matter who you are. Just the human being as a whole, we think a lot. And no one thinks more than others. Like, we all just straight up think the same. We think a lot. <laughs> so, uh, we just do. We spend a lot of time going about thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. About worries, about yesterday, about tomorrow, about the bills, about whatever. And the moments that we don't think is because we are engaged in something. Either in work or... and But work tends to be very stressful for some people and this and that so so what do we do we entertain ourselves and the entertaining is that's why that's why entertainment gets paid so much you know entertainment is many things that's why they get paid so much because they get you out of thinking uh good morning chanel i'm a strong uh, chanel says i'm a strong believer in giving and sharing it's part of uh, networking and that good energy, that good energy comes back to you yeah Totally, totally. I totally believe that. Uh, I and, and and you know, I also I also mentioned in the in the other video, giving disproportionately, right? Like giving so much that it it, it ruins you, uh, quote unquote. Like like not ruins you, but you know, like people that have that have changed the world, they went bankrupt trying to trying to give, not trying to charge trying to give they went bankrupt people that have changed the world they go bankrupt they just give so much that they go they go they go bankrupt on trying to give Walt is or like anybody think of anyone who's who you you go to and you're like oh my god I'm gonna go eat that or I'm gonna go uh, to this park or watch this movie or whatever it's the I think the word I used earlier, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but I'm going to use it again. Democratized goods and services, right? Why? 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 Because everybody can get them, right? Everybody can get them. Not for free, but for a stupid fraction, like like nothing of the cost of what it, what it costs to make it. What it costs to bring it into market, right? For nothing. Like you go watch a movie that costs... A director, thirty million dollars, and you get to pay twenty bucks for it, at most. And when time goes by, you get to pay like nothing. Like they air it for free on TV. A few commercials in between, but nothing. And if you're lucky, you'll watch it on YouTube for like two dollars. No commercials or Netflix or whatever, right? Look at the amount of energy that it was created to make that movie. Any movie. Any of the big movies. Any movies from crazy Mel Gibson. You know, like energy. Lots of energy. Braveheart, right? <laughs> when I think of Mel Gibson and Braveheart, I think of Eric Cartman. <laughs> from South Park. Uh, anyways, uh, it brought a tear to my eye. Uh, a lot of energy, right? A lot of energy. And... And uh, and you get to pay nothing, baby. Like nothing. Like how much do you pay? Nada. Nada. Think of a restaurant. I mean, most people are like, oh my God, the restaurant's so expensive. No, it's not. You're just making that up. Like it's not expensive. Think about it. You go get, hire a chef. Go buy the food. Go have the chef cook. And then hire a waiter to bring you the stuff and on and on and on and at the at the end of the night if if you paid a lot maybe you paid a hundred two hundred bucks whatever uh, a nice restaurant maybe no more than two hundred bucks I don't know I haven't I have maybe I haven't been to really nice restaurants but uh, the nicest one I've been I think it was in in Soho in New York I, I didn't pay more than like two hundred bucks and like, imagine how much that would cost if you're doing it in your house. 
Like if you're doing it alone. So they democratize. That's what business does. It democratizes the goods and the service. Now, it's not just your table. There's many tables. But you get to have the same effing service. Just think about that for a second. It blows my mind every time I think about it. And this, this conversation came about because my, my, my grandfather told my mother in an attempt to, to teach her about life. He told her, uh, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was like a wealthy rancher in Mexico, right? Somehow things went south and, and lost these lands. But, uh, but he told her, be the giver, right? The giver always does well. Like, do, don't be the receiver. Don't be the receiver. Be the giver. You know, be the giver because the giver always always does well. If you're the receiver, you're being you're being entertained. If you're the entertainer, you are the giver, right? You are the giver. Look at sports. We go and we watch the sports, like whether it's soccer or, or I don't watch sports, but but most people do, right? Just whether it's soccer, baseball, or whatever. Uh, no, I do watch from time to time. I like boxing. Uh, it's just that I don't know. No, it's the Mexican in me. <laughs> uh, I like boxing from time to time. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and. Just like all the energy that is created to create a boxing match worthy, right, of people's attention. Not just the marketing of it, not just the hype and all of that, but like the the, the, the place where it was done, uh, the names of the people that are going to be there and on and on. And, and then you get this, you know, this massive event and you get to watch in a pay-per-view for like, I don't know. Like they overprice those, right? We're always crying about it. We're like, oh my god, it's a hundred bucks now. I remember when you used to pay twenty-five bucks, like pay-per-view, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. Like it's nothing in comparison to the the tickets that people paid to be there, right? Or even worse, the 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 amount of of energy and resources and money that it was put together to create the event. You know, like a ship. You go to a ship. You go. You go on a cruise. What is it? I don't know. Like a couple of thousand bucks. Uh, the ship is pretty much yours. Like, like again, it's a, it's another democratized. I hope I'm saying the right word. I don't know. Please correct me if I'm not. Goods and services. Right. Yeah, it's not. You're not the only family there, or you're not the only couple there. There's a few other dozen, you know. <laughs> There's a few more hundred people there. But you're all having the same experience. This is what Andy Warhol pointed at when he said Coca-Cola, right? You can drink Coca-Cola and so can the queen. And no amount of money will give her a better Coke. It'll be the same Coca-Cola. This is the power. This is the power of the giver. Chanel says uh, making money is art. Um, working hard is art. Good business is art. Yeah, the best business, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Andy Warhol. I love Andy. I know, I know, I know that Andy went down in history as like a very uh, mean dude, but uh, I don't think he was that mean. And he's a bit misunderstood. Was he was he local? I I think most artists are a little bit local. Just, we're just we're kind of faulty there. <laughs> we're kind of faulty there. <laughs> but uh, most serious ones, anyways, like you know, like people that have created impact in the art world, they're a bit bananas. I mean, think of anyone. Anyone, they're all, all most people don't know about this, but Monet had like huge anger issues. <laughs> Monet was an angry little guy, well, not little, he's tall, but he's an angry dude. Monet had to work on his anger, 
He would go bananas. Everybody would run out of the out of the studio, out of the house when he would go bananas. Look at Picasso. Picasso used to carry a firearm with uh, blank shots. And then shoot at people, right? Like, not really shoot, but like pretend. Uh, when he got asked, what does your artwork mean? What does your artwork represent? He would pull out the gun and then, and then, and then pretend, right? With a, with a blank shoot at them. That's how bananas he was. The guy was just bananas. Most of those guys there. Yeah. Look at Caravaggio. Caravaggio is like the ultimate bananas. Caravaggio is like a Wild West character, you know? The Italian version. Dude, that, that guy, if you see portraits of him, he looked like a pirate. He was like, ah. He, was like, he, he looked... <laughs> that, yeah, that dude was... That dude was off. <laughs> Everywhere he... He was a thug, man. Everywhere he went, he always, like, picked a fight. He stabbed the guy. He killed the guy. And back in the day where, like, you know, people carried swords. It wasn't like... It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to shoot him. Like, people carried swords. He was always getting into, like... Fights in the bars. He had a horrible temper. Horrible drinking problem. The guy was... The guy was... The guy was loony. I mean, if you guys have... If you guys have a chance, go study Cicado. Cicado was a real loony guy. And I'm not talking about, like... Like, like crazy bad. Like, ah... Uh, like, no. Like, ah, uh, psycho crazy. No, I'm talking about, like... They just... They just thought different, you know. They were they were they were just different characters. Uh, the Villa Alfa de Siqueiros is one of my favorite Mexican artists. It's not Diego. I don't even I don't even fucking like Diego. Like everybody's like Diego, 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 Diego. Diego was crazy too, but I, nah, Diego didn't have a character that Siqueiros had. Siqueiros was like Siqueiros was like a Siqueiros had too much heart. If Cicadas wasn't a wasn't a wasn't a painter, he could easily have been like a a war general or some shit like that. Cicadas had a, too much heart. Cicadas was from the state of Chihuahua, and uh, uh, he took on arms in the revolution, in the Mexican Revolution, in nineteen ten. So he's like, like how we say it, está tirando bala. You know, he's he's a revolutionary, and he's just a badass. Man. If you guys, if you guys have a chance, go read a little Cicados. If you like, if you like artist uh, biographies. Anyways, uh, yeah, they're just a lot of them are bananas. I like it. I like it. A little bananas is good. It, it, it's, it's it's like balance the shit out, right? You can't you can't you can't be all like it can't be all nice and and like that, that's not the real world. Like look at the sky, the sky's fucking bananas. One day it's like clear, and the next day it's like it's like blowing. It's like <laughs> it's like raining and storming and 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 all kinds of shit. Lightnings. Fucking fucking sky is bananas too. Nature's bananas, right? Like, like everything's fine, and like if today you're like one, if one day you're fine, and the next day or the next moment you're like, ah, shit, man, I hate this. People are like, oh my god, you, there's something wrong with you. No, dude, that's that's nature. Nature's bananas. Nature's bananas like that. It's just that I think that artists are more in tune with that. They tend to be more in tune, and they're not so apologetic about it. In their personal, their their sex lives, their whatever, right? They're 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 just not they're not apologetic about it. They're, they're like, yeah, mm -hmm, I can't do the whole uh, monogamy thing, right? I just can't do it. Diego Rivera was one of them. Like, yeah, it's just not for me, right? Little bananas. I'm all about that poly. So, just is. Uh, Anyways, let me go back to what I was saying. Be the giver, guys. <laughs> be the giver. Find out where you can give. Where you can give and be the giver. Uh, 
I got to a point where I was like, man, I drive so much, right? Like, there's a lot of driving. If you live in the, I, I think uh, this is a this is a thing that that some of us from Mexico say, and I, not just Mexico, but I, I assume other other parts of the world. Uh, but I'll speak for myself. Uh, we're like, man, in the U.S., you have to drive everywhere, right? Because, uh, and in Mexico too, but but in certain areas, uh, it's it's very much like the big cities here. That you don't really have to drive. You don't really need driving, right? You can get anywhere. Uh, like in New York, why would you drive in New York? Like, oh my God, like, like it's stupid. Like, why would you do that, right? Public transportation everywhere, and everything is whatever you need. It's like uh, a block away. You don't need to drive anywhere. Uh, in Mexico, it's the same way in certain areas. Like where I grew up in Guadalajara, like there, there, you don't need to drive. Why would you drive? Uh, so. So I realized that there's a lot of driving here. And and I was like, man, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do in this driving time? I was like, you know what? I start recording my thoughts. And the first thing I started doing was recording like 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 stupid little lectures, right? <laughs> Just for myself, like recording a journal. That's how I started. I started recording with like all this like downtime, right? I was like, I'm gonna record a like a journal, and I was like, "F a journal," you know. People are doing blogs, so I started doing that, and then I was like, "Nah," and then it just turned into like this Instagram rants and, and videos. And every now and then, I'll upload them on YouTube too. So, anyways, that's like one form of giving, right? That's like one one form. Like, what do I do with all these experiences and all these things that I've learned, and 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 the fails and the and the journey, and on and on and on, you know what, uh, yeah, but I, I shouldn't do that, like, there was another part of me that was like, I shouldn't do that, I should really just polish it really well, and then, like, go create another problem, right, like, polish it really well, and then record it nice, and then have it, have, like, edit it into a nice video with, like, sound, and, and, like, you know, like, they put little music in the beginning, and, like, special effects and shit like that, and I was like, oh, my God, I'll never get started, and so I never did it. I never did it that way. I just, it's raw, right? It's like, it's like raw here. Like sometimes I'm afraid that, that, that it's so raw, right? But, oh well. There's plenty of times where I put my foot in my mouth, right? Like, ah, shit, why did I say that? Uh, but those are the risks sometimes, right? Of having something this raw. Most of the time I'm thinking, oh man, I hope that my, my nose is clean. I hope I don't fart, you know. I, <laughs> I, I hope, I hope, you know, I hope I, uh, I don't sound too stupid today. Because <laughs> there's no like erase, go back. It's, it's wrong, right? It's, there's no edit. So that's what it is, baby. It's wrong. And, and, and so that's my form of giving. You know, that's my form of giving. How can I give? How can I give in a situation where where it looks like downtime? Uh, what do you think about James uh, McNeil Whistler? Whistler, Whistler, yeah, Whistler. I, I don't I don't really know much about Whistler. I, I the the few art pieces that I know, like uh, the study of of gray and black. Uh, the, the painting of his mother, one of the most famous paintings. Uh, I, I, I think that he was the result of so many things that were happening at the same time. There was a lot of realism and there was a lot of art nouveau happening, like Klimt and, and, and all these other dudes around it. Uh, I think it's just the result of like. someone who was in in neither corner you know he wasn't so much avant-garde but he was also not traditional it wasn't so much that he was avant-garde like like he he was he was definitely no klimt right uh but he was totally he was really not traditional either so i like the dude's art dark he knew how to use black that's for sure just like just like uh, uh john singer sergeant knew how to use gray 
a lot of people don't know this, but John Singer Sargent's strength was not in in uh, in the color. People are like, oh my god, he was an excellent colorist. I'm like, shut up. Not he wasn't a colorist. Like, yeah, sure, why not? Whatever. He was a master at painting with grays. Like he understood grays. He understood grays the same way that Rembrandt understood gold, uh, not gold, uh, 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 earth tones like coppers and and and, and uh, burnt siennas and stuff like that. The same way that Klimt understood gold. Right? Like he, like John Singer Sargent, understood gray. He knew how to paint gray. And and, and John Singer, I, another thing about John Singer Sargent. He wasn't, like, a lot of people talk about, like, there's a lot of neo-classical painter bullshitters today that are like, he's brush economy, dude, like, like, it hurts my head when I, like, next time I hear that, I'm going to punch someone in the nose. <laughs> no, I won't punch no one in the nose, just in my mind. Uh, he wasn't, like, he didn't have brush economy. Like, like people, like, I really just don't understand this fucking artist. Like, John Singer Sargent, I'm going on a rant, okay? If, FYI, I'm going on a rant on John Singer Sargent here. He didn't have brush economy. Like, like today's neoclassical bullshitters, painters, say. Like, oh, he had, like, such brush economy. Oh, my God, he's brush economy. The John Singer Sargent was a messy painter. Have you seen his unfinished works? There is no economy on his brush. Like, John Singer Sargent learned how to create quick gesture when painting in a time where there was no, there was no color photography. Everybody needed to have a portrait painted. So he became very prolific and he learned from this dude. I forgot his name right now. He learned from this dude how to paint very fast, very effectively, but not necessarily using brush economy, but using gesture gesture uh it's different i know some people get get like get that confused they're like brush economy and gesture is the same thing no brush economy is like doing a lot right doing trying to do a lot with less and that's not necessarily what john singer Sargent did john singer Sargent did a lot by not necessarily trying to do less he did a lot in the gesture of the brush like there's there's so much so much experience expressiveness in the brush stroke that it's insane it's insane i've seen i've seen artists who do brush economy and they, they, it looks really nice and it looks a little photographic and and airy fairy but john singer Sargent didn't do that to me john singer Sargent is like a rembrandt it's like a modern rembrandt if you see his work he's very abstract his work if you see it up close the work looks very abstract it is actually very he actually reminds me more of a of a, of a velasquez the work is very, and that's why people can't replicate his style, because it's it's a mixture of realism and abstraction. There's a lot of abstraction happening in his work. There's my rant. Uh, a good reference of that is the movie um, uh, Eternity's Gate, the new one, uh, the new Van Gogh movie with William Defoe. Here's a spoiler. He says, uh, uh, Gauguin tells him, Paul Gauguin tells him, you shouldn't paint so fast. You're painting so fast. And then and then Van Gogh goes back into like, let me order another coffee because I'm ordering a coffee for my wife. Okay, yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I need a, a venti, uh, venti iced coffee with half and half and classic. Alrighty, so say what else are we getting? Can I get a... Can I get a butter croissant? I don't know if my wife is going to want that, but if she doesn't, I'll eat it. Okay. <laughs> what else are we getting? That'll be all. Alrighty. Tell us that we said hi, okay? I sure will. All right. I'll we'll see you at the window. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, that movie, Van Gogh with William Defoe. So Galgan's like, you're painting so fast, man. Like, don't paint so fast because Galgan was up. Uh, punk ass like that right nobody likes him fucking pedo nobody likes Gauguin 
We like the way he painted, but like, like if you like you just, if you study Galgan, you're not gonna like him. He's, he's just a just a bad dude. I don't like him. Uh, anyways, uh, he's like, you're painting so fast, man. And then there's like a flashback, right? In the movie, and Van Gogh is like in front of all this at the at the Orsay at the Musée d'Orsay in France. I don't know, Paris, uh, and and. Is that where it's at? I guess. Uh, and then he's looking at all these paintings by Delacroix, Velázquez. And I think I think he's looking at painting by Velázquez. And he's looking at all these paintings. Uh, Rubens is another one. Rubens. And then he realizes something. He's like, all the painters I like, which are all the best painters in the world, right? Painted fast. Mama, mama, Ooh. Mama. Let's see. I know, I know. It's like... It's like deja vu. It's like something. deja vu. I don't even I don't even know why I leave. I should just like park. Just, like, I should just park right, right here. <laughs> why why leave? Why? Here we go. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Feel goodbye. Like bye bye. I'm going famous on the Starbucks. I should probably make up like a like a pseudo name or something. You know? Oh no, I already have the world's greatest living artist, but that'll be too long for them to like be like, hi world's greatest living artist. I bet you I can get him to say that. I'm gonna start getting them to say that. I can get legit in the streets here of Tucson. <laughs> I can get legit here in like in like Tucson, Arizona, in the Starbucks. Be like, world's greatest living artist, what's up? I can get some street cred here. Getting my Starbucks. Uh, so yeah, guys, that it, it, Van Gogh is like, dude. Everybody that I like paints fast. Like, what the hell? Everyone that I like paints fast. And then Galgan's like, dude, you paint so fast. You don't even paint like that. Like, like trying to like step on him, right? And and trying to say like, I know it's a movie, but I'm sure they had that conversation. Why not? Uh, Trying to like put him down because he's because he's not a realist painter, right? But what 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 Van Gogh was pointing at was that they were only realists because that was their time. Like like they they were they really just were painters. And painting is fucking messy. If you haven't noticed, painting is messy. As 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 uh, the contemporary artist. Uh, I guess should we call him contemporary or should we just call him a, a postmodern? George Kondo says painting is very messy. That's why I like drawing. <laughs> so he draws with like oil sticks, uh, which is a form of painting. But but it, it's cool. Just because I'm I'm hoping that we become friends at some point in our lives. Uh, I'm not gonna talk shit about him. All right, Kondo, you're cool. Uh, anyways, <laughs> painting is very messy, guys. So most artists are, are very abstract because painting is messy. Like the act of painting is a very messy thing. I don't care if you're a realist painter. Like it's a messy thing. It's just messy. Painting is messy. Like most people are like, like people are like, oh my God, I'm not messy. I'm not messy. It's not really me Painting's not messy. Do that. You know why it's not messy? Because you don't do it enough. And the moment that you start doing it enough, you'll realize painting is very messy. And then, the, and then as you do it throughout years, and you do it a lot, and you do it many hours every day, you're gonna find out that there's only one type of painter in the world, the abstract painter. But you don't have to be abstract in the form of like no representational. That's not what I'm talking about. You can be a representational painter, but every painter is abstract. Is an abstract painter. Even if you're a representational painter, there's an abstraction in the world, and there's an abstraction in creating. As the great Degas already said, only when I don't know what I'm doing is that I'm doing something good. What he was talking about, he was pointing at that abstraction. Only when I'm being abstract, right, with the knowledge of the realism, with the knowledge of the of the school of the time, which was realism and neoclassical before that, with that knowledge, he was uh, he was painting something different. With that knowledge, and then that's why we have the ballerinas and all of this shit that looks 
Like, well, it, it's it's abstract, but I can tell what it is. Well, no shit, genius, because that's what people painted back then. It had to be representational, otherwise, no one would have no one would have accepted it. Right? It had to be representational, but it was very abstract. I mean, any any Degas painting is extremely abstract. Everything you see about a Degas, Degas was an expressionist painter. It was just that he was using realism as a vehicle. Fuck, I went philosophical and deep here. The guy was using realism as a vehicle, just like Velázquez was using realism in Goya and uh, Renoir, Monet. Monet was using realism as a vehicle. In his last years in Giverny, in, in the garden, he didn't give a fuck about realism anymore. He was like, eh, too old, too famous, too wealthy. I don't care about using realism as a vehicle anymore. I'm just going to paint. And that's when you see the most... And it wasn't because of the cataracts, as some people tend to think. It wasn't the cataracts. Dude, that guy... All great artists become abstracts at some point in their life. They become extremely abstract expressionist painters. And and it doesn't mean they're not realistic. They're not they're not realist painters. It doesn't mean the, the work is not representational. It means that there's an abstraction happening. There's a fragmentation. Everything good is abstract. Look at the sky. Look at trees. Anything good is abstract. Look at a person. Most people are abstract, man. One day they're like, yeah, cool. And then the next moment they say they're, they're like cubism. You know, the next moment they're like, I don't like that. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to chill here. And, and like we're, we're, we're. It's, it's this changing thing, right? Most people are... When Picasso was painting cubism, he wasn't painting people. He wasn't trying to paint people. He was painting personalities. He was painting the, 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 the abstraction, the fragmented abstraction of human thought and the behavior of people. That's what he was painting. That's why people are like, oh my God, I don't understand cubism. Dude, if you don't understand cubism, you don't understand personality. You don't understand human behavior. F- fucking people, look at them. It's a perfect representational, perfect representational painting work of a human being we're fucking fragmenting not in a bad way it's just it's just the way it is you know you have all this mumble jumble all these things and happening in a human being you have you have memories uh, 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 goals things that you want to accomplish things you want to forget uh, things you love things you hate right you have all this thing and Picasso wanted to paint that in the portrait he didn't just want to paint the, the shell right He's like, well, I painted the shell long enough. When I was like 12 years old, I was like a master painter of the shelf, right? Why don't we go deep and, and, and not just paint the shelf, the, the, the shell, not the shelf, the shell of a human being. Why don't we paint the inner workings? I go deep on this shit, huh? <laughs> I need a TED talk. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, man, this street's closed. So yeah, guys, every every painter is an abstract painter uh, in one way or another. There's actually a movement right now that I really like, I really, really dig, and I, and I, I'm not going to lie, I have, I have serious FOMO of this movement, because I, I, I really want to somehow participate and play around it, but it's a certain style, it's, it's so I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm not good with styles I don't like keeping styles like uh, if, if styles were like romantic relationships I'd be the biggest asshole ever you know I'm just not good at keeping one style uh, I'm just not like I have to paint in, in many different ways and styles and expressions and whatnot but there's this movement right now that it's uh, uh, there's this movement right now that it's is uh, some form of neo-realism that is happening, uh, but the paintings are very abstract. It's 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 a controlled, I would say, a controlled expressionist approach. It's like controlled expressionism. Chanel says a mentor of mine once said when. When you get good at drawing with your right hand, 
draw with your left. There we go. I like that. That's a that's a good uh that's a good Yeah, that's that is really good. Yeah, you should you should always explore uh um things that may look and not because they're difficult. I think I think you should always explore um new a new approach. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I used to do when I was younger is is, is is start a painting upside down. Like, you know, like, like, like paint it upside down. Not flip it and see what it looks like, because I know a lot of artists do that. Like, oh, I'm going to flip it and see what it looks like. No, like paint it upside down. Because it gives you a whole different uh, approach. Right? Or drawing upside down. You know, like try drawing upside down. Man, that'll give you... Or... or or draw without uh, reference, just from memory, and 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 draw dynamically. That's something that is I would recommend people to do. Like get a horse, draw a horse, and then now imagine that the horse is like laying, and there's like a leg, and there maybe there's a wing hugging the ground, and maybe it's a Pegasus, and then you know like 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 draw it dynamically, like there's action happening. Man, that'll get you good fast. That'll get you muy bueno very fast. So. There it is, guys. I hope that I, I made any sense for all you beautiful people out there. A beautiful mess says art experiences. Totally. Uh, I saw an artist at the banks or river Ganga uh, in India, huh? Yeah. Uh, who had no hands, but they drew sketches with feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you use what you got, right? You use what you got. You got to use what you got. This is why Picasso uh, said, when I don't have one color, I use another one. I think he said blue or red or something like that. Um, because that's the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to but just use whatever you got. Like so many people say, "Oh man, I don't, I don't have, um, I don't have, um, what do I like? I like seeing back here. Bam! I don't have, um, what do I call it? Ideas." People say, I don't have ideas. I don't have ideas. You don't have ideas? You don't want to paint. You don't need ideas to paint. Or, or I don't have reference photos. Dude, you don't want to paint. You don't need reference photos. What's up, baby? Hi, You guys are going to see me here put my stuff away. Gotta put some stuff away here. I was working, I brought work home, so I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but I was doing this uh, long format watercolors last night. I was working like till one in the morning here. So I don't know, sometimes I just I bring work home. It's crazy like that. Like I'm like, I'm like, what do I do? Sometimes I can't sleep. Not that I not that I can't sleep because I'm thinking too much. Like anxiety or anything like that or stress. No, I just, sometimes I just don't feel like sleeping. Yeah. And then I sleep. I oversleep the next day. So probably tonight I'm going to oversleep. But I, I slept a few hours. I slept like four hours last night. And I was playing with this. Check it out. Boom, baby. I don't know what I'm going to sell them for. What do you guys think? I just think they're so freaking cool. They're like marshlands. So this is something that I that I practice a lot. It's painting and drawing with no reference photos. Now, one of the things that we as artists start like complaining about is like, well, then my work is going to look repetitive. Yeah, but whose work doesn't? 
Like, I, Leonardo da Vinci's work looks so fucking repetitive. Monet's work is extremely repetitive. Picasso, dude, every other painting looked the same. Like, repetitive. It's not, it's not that, that the work is going to look repetitive. It's, that, that, that shouldn't be our problem. That shouldn't be like our, our, and, and it's easier said than done, I know that. But that shouldn't be the thing. The thing should be, like, what do you got to say? Like, can you only paint when you have reference for it? Or can you paint at will? Can you actually express it with it? Or do you, do you need a photograph? Do you need a reference? Do you need, you know? And I'll tell you something, guys. In order to start not using reference all the time, um, you, you probably have to use reference a lot first. So get good at that. A few years until you don't need them anymore. Um, I'm getting at a place, at a point right now where I'm like, kind of tired of reference, you know, like a model or, or drawing or whatever. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of reference photos. They, they're a limitation. I'm finding out that they're a limitation. They slow me down. Like it's a limitation. It's like, Ooh, I can't paint it because I don't have a reference photo. Like, dude, like, like, ugh, get out of here. Reference photo. Just paint something, you know, because it's, it's, it slows down the process. Slows down the process, and then and then you're you're stuck only painting when you have reference. Uh, don't get me wrong; I still I still use reference, but I, I more and more I I don't like it. More and more I, I kind of kind of starting to despise it. Like 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 I see how limiting how limiting it is. Like using references is very limiting. Not using them. It's very liberating, but in order to not use them, you have to have a lot of skill, right? You have to have a lot of skill. You have to you have to have practiced, and it, and, and and it's a very brave jump because you kind of have to not give a fuck what other people think. So it's a very it's a very um, brave jump. You kind of have to be like you have you have to be okay with. You have to be okay with the limitations of not using references. It, they, they, it has limitations. You're going to limit represent. You're probably going to limit a lot of representational aspect of your painting, right? If you don't have references, you're going to limit the representational aspect of the painting. But then you're going to find something else, something out, um, like Keith Haring, right? Keith Haring. Could have not been the Keith Haring we know if he was just always using references. Like, like at some point in his career, he's like, no, no reference. Like, I need to, right? I need to just draw these little figures, right? And and then, and if you look at his work, it's like a stream. Like, right? you could think it's repetitive, but is it really? Or did he go deep? Right? Maybe he didn't go wide. Right? There wasn't like. A little guy drinking coffee and another little guy uh, walking a dog or maybe maybe there was some of that but but he went deep as opposed to just wide you know he simplified the process so that he's able to turn around so much work that's what Picasso did too Dali did that in, in later in his life why because a lot of people think that it's that it's business. Like, oh, it's because they're doing it because they're trying to sell more. Yeah, why not? There's probably some of that in there. But I don't really think it's that. What I've come to understand is that you, as an artist, need freedom. And all of these limitations, like color palette, like, oh my God, if I get another question, if I get asked again about what's your color palette, dude, it doesn't matter. Like color palette, um, format, do you prime the canvas, do you not? Uh, what reference photo do you, those are all limitations those are all like, like those are all the things that I want to get rid of and those are the things that people ask it's so weird because those are the things that I want to uh, I want to get rid of it you know 
because they, they limit me as an artist. Like I want to I want to be able to paint a figure I don't know whatever like drinking a glass of wine or whatever at a party at a cocktail party uh, whatever right without being like oh I have to go get a reference photo or oh, I have to go here and I have to have to sketch it out and practice it and and like there's certainly room for those artists but that's not me so I want to be able to step away from that and still yet keep some level of representation in there so that I can tell my story with a bit of representation, right? I can tell my story, not necessarily with, with representation in the, in the sense of realism, but, but representational, uh, not necessarily like realism, but more, more of a storyteller, right? Like a children's book, right? You don't, you don't watch a children's book and you go, oh yeah, well, you know, Tommy has an apple and then, you know, like you don't you don't watch that and and go, well, that was well painted. No, you're you're there for the story, right? You're reading that story to your child or whatever. You're there for the story. So that's the way I see my painting. Like 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 it's the it's it's what it's saying, not not oh my god, like it's so well painted or or the brush strokes or I feel like those are all limitations and I'm and I'm I'm trying to step away from them. Uh Patricia says I let the painting tell me what is going to what is yeah what it's going to be freedom yeah, yeah I think that's the how's it going Megan good to see you here uh, it's uh, I think it's the it's the best approach if you just if you just kind of flow with it you know whatever it is that you do whether you do abstract works or or, or realist painting or whatever you do just if you just let it flow then you're going to be in a much better place than as opposed to I constantly need I constantly need Is it uh, No. I constantly need reference photos. I constantly need um, I, I, there, to me, I see them like crutches, right? I can't tell my story. I can't walk there unless I have this cane or this crutches. I can't get there, right? And 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 I don't want them. Yeah. For, for a painter, uh, the idea of it doesn't fit or it's not realistic enough or it's not representational enough, it's a limitation. It's a limitation. Or it's not abstract enough. Like people go into galleries and they, they see this this very contemporary, uh, well crafted abstract works that that someone with like a torch dried in one place and then they, you know, like they burnt one side and then they put gold leafing and and it's like all this almost decorative thing going on that looks like fantastic. It looks great, you know, uh, and. And so that's what they think our abstraction is. It's got to be this thing, right? It's got to look like the background of a clipped painting. Otherwise, it's not good. And and so the, the idea that it has to fit a certain, you know, um, uh, aesthetic is a limitation in, in its own. Like, if it has to fit something, you're limiting yourself. It shouldn't fit anything. It should just, you, you should just do it, move on to the next one. Do it. Move on to the next one. After five, six, ten of those, you're probably going to start landing a good one. There's going to be a really good one in there. You know? And, and my philosophy is, is the one, like Babe Ruth, uh, when he was asked, you know, about him being one of the best, uh, I don't know, home run, uh, I don't know, he had like this title for most home runs or something. He answered, it's, it's, I don't think about that. I just, I just bat. Like, like, like I just, I just bat, you know, and that's the way I see painting. Like, like I don't think about the home run because it limits me, right? I just, I just bat so many times that it's inevitable that, that a good painting is going to come out of there. A good in the sense of maybe what I think it's good or maybe what other people think it's good or what a buyer is looking for. Because even that is a limitation. Like, what is good anyways? You know? 
Picasso did over, some people say he did over 47, 40 something thousand paintings, oil paintings. Um, some people say it was just 20,000. Even if it was just 20,000, 20,000 is a shitload of paintings. Um, but we only know him for a handful of paintings. Like most people can only like think of a handful of them, you know? Uh, I don't know, a couple of portraits. Uh, the the women of Avignon, uh, Guernica. People can only think of a few of them. You know, most people, I mean, anyways, most people can only think of a few of them. And and so what happens to the other, like, 19,000, or what's the math on that? I don't know. <laughs> Horrible at math. What's the math on that? I don't know. Well, like, what happens to the other, you know, 99% of the paintings? Are they forgotten? Were they not good? Were they not Picasso-worthy? Or they were only left for the... For the for the second second market uh, to deal with them, were they only good for auction and for profit, or were they not great Picassos worthy of our recognition, our time, and our memory? No, it's not that, guys. It's just that what is considered good, who the fuck knows? Like, who knows what good is? Like, years are gonna go by, and then we're gonna say again. Oh, we misjudged this painting by Van Gogh that no one cares about. It's actually one of the best, and it's going to be in all of the art books. Like, at some point, it was this one. At some point, it was the potato eaters. At some point, it was... It, it keeps changing, because what is good? Who knows? But see, I don't, I don't look at what, what good is. I'm, I'm, one of my mentors says, stop trying to get good, get frequent. I look at frequency. How much can I do? Let them worry about what good is. By the way, Andy Warhol said that. Let them, let them worry about whether they like it or hate it. While they're doing that, go back to the studio. Keep creating more work. That's all you should care about. But most artists, we get trapped in, this both, in both of these worlds. We're like, I want to be productive, but I also care. Dude, don't care. You got to stop caring. If you, if you want to do something, you got to stop caring so much. Otherwise, you're not going to be productive. Megan says, this makes sense to me. I am frozen by fear this week. I just have to act. Yeah, and any, any action. Uh, any action is perfect action. Because it's a thread. See, this is what I've learned. You, you got to find the thread. And any action takes you through th back to the thread. There's like, a, there's like a thread. You know, like in the night... There's the, in, in the woods, if you ever camped, they, 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 put, they put like a, a rope that can take you back to the camp or whatever. Uh, this, this rope, right, in the middle of the night in the woods, uh, it's the same thing. When you get lost, it's, it's because you're not acting. And any acting, start washing your brushes, start cleaning the studio, start painting a little something, draw something, throw it away. Like, don't, don't think like, oh, I'm going to keep it. Like, throw it away. Like, have that attitude that this doesn't mean anything. It, I don't care. I'm not going to exhibit it. I'm not even going to take a picture of it. But start painting it. And then, boom, baby, you find the thread. And then you go back. If that makes any sense. Ready to go? All right, guys. I'm going to have to leave you. I have to go to the studio now. I got to take uh, some stuff. And uh, I hope that you guys like this video. I hope that you guys share it with other people. Uh, friend of Mundos. If you guys got some friendos. Share it. Let people know what we're doing here. We're, we're sharing experiences. I'm sharing my experience and I'm also uh, engaging and reading your guys' experiences. My experience can be the only one that matters. Like, like I'm just, this is, it's, it's too fragmented. It's just me. Like, there's so many of us. I want to share your guys' experiences too. And, all right. So, take care, guys. Peace.